Well, that was a fun one right there. Um, you know, I've said it since the beginning of the season that we want to be playing our best football at the end of the season, and we are right now. We, we've got a really good team. Um, we went out there and competed. We want to be the more physical team tonight. I think that showed up. Um, you know, I think obviously anybody watching us can say that we've got some really special players on our team, including our quarterback. Um, he was dialed tonight. He was on point, I thought. All of our coaches did a great job of preparing these guys and having them ready to go. And that crowd and our student section was absolutely unbelievable. So we're going to need them to show up next week in Vegas. But um, I told these guys earlier in the season that every one of your goals is still in front of you. And I saw a team that just said for the last several weeks that we're just going to work. And they just did that. They just worked and they put all their goals in front of them. Uh, and they focused on one day at a time. And that's what showed up tonight. Start all the way in the back with Matt. Dan, how much did that first drive, eight minutes, set the tone just for what you wanted this game to be? Well, I thought they were just really efficient, you know, and taking what's in front of them. Um, really proud of those guys to execute. I wasn't anticipating us having a lot of eight-minute drives in this game. I didn't think it would look like that. But um, it's, it's a great, you know, our guys had a great plan, and our guys executed that plan really well. Right here, second row, second seat in, Cal. He held their run game to, I think, 53 net yards, Martinez season low in yardage. Um, they, obviously, they've had success running against stack boxes before, but what, what was working so well for you guys in, in stopping him and the run game? Yeah, making sure that we didn't have any one-for-ones. You know, they drawed up on offense where if they block you, um, and their middle field safety is the last guy left, or your, your high safety is the last guy left, they're going to gain five yards. So we knew we had to strike blocks, separate from blocks, and win uh, those one-on-one -on -one battles. And then when you make contact, they have to be knocked back tackles, which I thought our guys did a good job of. Saying we're on the right here, second seat. First off, just the difficulty of Bo's throw all the way down the field to Troy, and then also the significance of that in terms of regaining momentum before half. Yeah, I think you could pick a lot of throws tonight that were really special. You know, that was certainly one of them. I know he had pressure in his face on a big third down conversion as well. Um, but yeah, he was dialed in uh, tonight and did a really good job executing those wideouts, did a great job of attacking the ball. So um, being able to score, I think that series started with 54 seconds left at half. You know, and I know people are probably like, why are you calling timeouts here at the end? And that's exactly why. So we can have the ball back and an opportunity to go score. So really proud of those guys putting that, that drive together. Here on the right. Bill. Dan, how are you, uh, um, how do you think your team is looking at getting another opportunity to play Washington next week? And, and how have you used that? Uh, has that been sort of a motivating factor since that defeat to have the know that potentially at the end of the year there's an opportunity to face them again and how have you guys used that internally? Yeah, I think ultimately every single player in that locker room knew what, is, what was in front of us and we knew we didn't get there if we didn't do a good job of focusing on the task at hand and that's really what it's been about. It's been about, been about each day. It's been about each moment. Um, it's going to be tomorrow. It's not going to be about Washington either. It's going to be about the Ducks and what do we got to do tomorrow to be better. Um, so we kept the, you know, kept the focus on us and what's in front of us, and we know we got to play good teams to get where we want to be. But, um, again, playing our best ball, how can we get better? And we talk about a growth mindset in this program. I think we have a bunch of guys that are like, okay, how can I improve? How can I get better? And that showed up tonight. Second row left, Jared. With Jalil not able to go, I'm just curious what you made of Dante's performance. Obviously, a big play for him at the end, and just what you've made of his season as a whole, just kind of waiting for his chance. Yeah, I'm really proud of the way he played tonight. Um, obviously, I have to go back and watch the film, but you know, every time I looked out there, he was you know stuck on somebody, and that's what you want when you. We ask our guys to play some aggressive coverage at times, and we put those guys on islands. And he performed really well tonight. He competed for the ball when it was in the air. Obviously, that turnover was a huge play. Um, you know, I know he had some aggressive. You know, there's a couple aggressive penalties in there that we want to go coach, but that's gonna ha you know that's gonna happen at times when you ask your guys to play those coverages. All right, Zach. All year, you've talked about the need to play a complete game, and obviously that stemmed in part for how this game went last year. How do you think you did tonight in that aspect of the game? Yeah, I thought that was a complete game. You know, we, we didn't want their return to get an opportunity in special teams. You know, um, I thought we were able to flip the field when we had to punt the ball. Um, you know, there's uh, certainly some moments in, in every phase that we can take back, but offensively to go at three for three on the first, you know, few drives, and then we ended up kicking a field goal, um, you know, in one of those. But just to, to start off hot and to keep that momentum rolling um, was really impressive. Front left, James. After you guys watched the replay of all week long of last year's fourth quarter, particularly what do you think it means to the defensive line, Dan, to take not just their strength away, but to hold them to such a low after the way last year ended and watching it all week, be reminded of it. 
to have the output that they had tonight. Yeah, it's not really about them. You know, it, it's really about our players and them owning the standard that exists for us. Um, they were motivated coming in this game to put together a great performance, and it's really about building off the last performance we had, and it's going to be about building into the next one. And um, they certainly take a lot of pride about it, and they've, they've certainly been reminded this last week of what last year looked like, and they didn't want to replicate that. All the way in the back, Matt. You mentioned playing your best football at the end of the year. Where do you feel like you guys have elevated your game to, to get to that level? Yeah, I mean, I think it starts in practice, right? It starts in practice and preparation. It starts with our coaches having great answers for what the opponent does um, and being able to attack it. It starts with our players having an elite level of focus in meetings. And when those things show up in practice, when you practice a certain way, when you prepare a certain way, that preparation is going to equal separation in the game. And that showed up today. Brenna, back left. You mentioned this being a complete game in, in context of what happened last year in this context. How does it feel to play this kind of game against this team with what happened last season? Yeah, I'm really proud of our guys. I'm, I'm really proud of the way they performed. Um, I know we didn't want to come in here and have a three quarter performance. We wanted four quarters and, and uh, play until the, the zeros were up on the board. And our guys did that tonight. Second row, Eric. I was wondering if there was an update on, on Gary. It looked like that could have been a tough one. Yeah, I haven't got to visit with medical staff yet, but I uh, caught him right when he came off the field, and he felt like he was going to be okay, but obviously I'll have to get an update. All the way in the back on the right, Aaron. Uh, what was your reaction when you saw Mateo uh, sack DJ? Uh, hit him harder. No, uh, Mateo did a great job tonight. I know this was a fun one for him, and um, I've got a lot of respect for that team we just played. That's a really good you know, football team that plays a brand of football that's hard to match, and um, to see him get an opportunity to go out there and play on that stage was, was great. Are you third row, Bill? When you have a growth mindset, as you talk about, and it's you know the one-day approach, is reaching the Pac-12 title game something to celebrate, or is it part of the just part of the the journey to where you're trying to go? You know, it's hard to celebrate in this profession when you're always focused on, you know, what's next. Um, I expected us to be here, right? And I don't really know what everyone else thought, but I expected us to be in this position because I know what our team's capable of. Um, and we still have some unfinished business. We want to go out there and, and compete and put our best foot forward. So excited about what's next. But, you know, we're, we're going there to, you know, for the opportunity to play in a, in a big-time game and perform our best. Same right here on the right. Jeff did a good job tonight of cheating up on the snap and uh, jumping the snap and getting in the backfield. What did you think of the way he played and the way he was able to disrupt that way? Yeah, I'll have to go back and watch the film, but you know Jeff's a really good player. He's intentional. He watches a ton of film. He studies the quarterback mannerisms. Um, he's dialed into what you know the cadence is going to look like, and uh, I thought he executed at a high, high rep tonight, but I'll have to go back and watch it. I know you spoke a little bit about Bo at the beginning, but I'm just curious in what could be his final game at Austin, what, what you kind of made of what he accomplished out there tonight. Elite. I thought our quarterback was elite tonight. And uh, even the moments that he wasn't, you know, protected, he made, you know, big-time plays for us, which was huge. Back middle. Coach not, only, Coach, not only is it just your second season with the program, but to be able to reach the Pac-12 championship in its final season, uh, for, to you, how special is that uh, on a personal level? Well, it's fun for your team to, you know, reach your expectations and play to the level that you think they can play. And I thought our team did that tonight. We're certainly excited to be representing, you know, the Pac-12 in, in this conference championship game. That's going to be uh, a lot of fun for us, but we want to go there and perform a, a certain way as well. Back left with a hat, and then we'll move it up to you, guys. Coach, it felt like a lot of your uh, a lot of your offensive success, especially in the passing game, came on curl concepts or you know comeback routes. Was that something you guys saw on film, or it just something that came with the game plan that Bo found? It's probably a combination of things that we do well and things that we thought fit, you know, based on the coverages they were playing. But um, you know, I thought our quarterback did a great job of taking what was there and available. And our our wideouts, a lot of those routes are reads, so it's based on the leverage of the DB, and they can you know adjust the route based on what kind of leverage they get. After a game where Bo completes 80% of his passes and is more often than not making the right throw, what's a film session with him like? And, and how does he go about dissecting his performance when, from, from our perspective, it doesn't seem like he makes that many mistakes? Yeah, well, Bo, Bo will be his hardest critic, and that's what makes Bo special, right? He's going to go back and look at all those plays that he knows he could have had or should have had, and he's going to fight to figure out a way to make sure that it happens. And that's why he's playing at such a high level right now. Um, he's a coach out there on the field. So when you have that mindset of how can I get better, you know, that's how you improve. Front left, James. 
And you're probably going to face Jonathan Smith next year, regardless whether he stays or goes to Michigan State. But the status of this series is still up in the air. You've voiced that you would like to see it continue. Would that include if it means playing there, moving the Boise State series off, and giving up a home game next year in order to keep this series going as soon as next season? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not involved in those decisions, but I'd love to play this team. And uh, I think this is a great rivalry for the state of Oregon. I think it's a great rivalry for football, and uh, certainly love to keep it, you know, keep it going. If we got to put the ball out in the parking lot, that's fine with me. <laughs> All the way in the back, Matt. It was a short week of prep this week, but the advantage of winning today is you get a normal week of prep next week. I, do you, is that a, a thing? Do you believe in that as an advantage, or just what are your thoughts on that? I think the biggest advantage is it gets us back to a normal week. You know, last week wasn't a normal week. It, we had to make some adjustments. You know, you lose kind of like your Monday prep day, and uh, you got to fit a lot into a small window, and this allows us to kind of get back in sync and in schedule with what a, a typical week looks like. All right, Aaron. This is a highly emotional game, you know, it being senior night. You know, it's a game that you want to win. And there's a lot at stake. I mean, obviously, you're um, wearing the number four. Everyone's wearing the number four. Um, just how did you feel like the guys handled that emotional aspect? And maybe what are what are you learning from that and taking into uh, next week where there's arguably going to be no more noise and more emotion? Well, emotion and passion is really important, but execution is more important. And I think it's all about channeling that energy. Um, every one of our guys want to go out there and have a great performance, right? And every one of these, these guys were playing for something more than themselves. They're playing for the seniors. They're playing for Spencer. Um, but they realized the best way to have a, you know, a performance that's worthy of um, you know, that praise and, and honoring those people is to go out there and execute. And that's what I'm really proud of. Trevor, back right. How similar to Bo's been your quarterback since your first days here in Eugene. What emotions do you feel over that being his last time walking out of that tunnel at Austin Stadium? Yeah, it's hard to put into words, man, how I feel about um, that guy, our growth together, um, the opportunity to be able to coach such a special young man. You know, got to see him right before uh, the game started there as, as we went out for senior day. And uh, just that guy has a twinkle in his eye, man. He's the ultimate competitor. He threw a couple passes, or I feel like he looked over and winked at me. Maybe that's just me trying to be in the moment, but both special, man. And uh, it's been a lot of fun coaching. Though. I know we're not done yet. Right here, right. Dan, uh, when you got here last year, obviously you wanted to establish a culture. I'm curious, two regular seasons in, how do you feel like the team, this particular team, has embodied the values that you have for a football team and kind of what are the barometers that you look at to, to evaluate that? Yeah, I probably look back at our DNA traits. And I told our guys right before we took took the field, I've never been around a more connected team. I've never been around a team um, that's anxious to grow and learn, you know, even from wins as much. You know, I'm, I'm excited because I know when I go in the film session here on Sunday with our guys that they're going to sit there and they're going to accept whatever we say as coaches, like we got to improve this or it's going to hurt us. And that's exciting. I talked about being a tough team. You know, there were moments – Last year where I felt like I've these guys need to bang at practice and we probably weren't as excited about banging at practice. And now, I, you know, if, if I put them in spiders one day, they're asking us why we're not in shoulder pads. And I think that speaks to their toughness. Um, you talk about the, what these guys put their bodies through, especially this late in the season to be able to perform what they sacrifice from their family. You know, Thanksgiving was yesterday and our guys were up here watching film. Our guys were up here preparing for that game. Um, we didn't you know, they didn't really have a Thanksgiving. And uh, so I'm really appreciative of the work that they put in. And we, you know, we talk about um, most people don't love doing hard things. And our guys love doing hard things. And that's, that's what separates them. Two more. Front left, James. When corner depth became uh, pretty quickly uh, an issue against Washington during the season, just how far off was Jaleel from playing tonight and Roderick as well? Uh, time will tell, really, on those guys. But I think that's where it goes back to strength and numbers, you know, for us and what that allows us to have, you know, guys that can go out there and compete. We have a lot of guys that can perform on our team when their number's called. They're ready to answer that, that bell. Last question on the back right, Trevor. Um, Evan Williams comes out with a giant club on his hand and still leads the team in tackles. What all went into the decision to wrap that thing up and, and get him out here today? Yeah, he's tough. He's a kid that wants to go out there and play, um, perform for his team. But we obviously want to take care of his, you know, his being safe out there in the field and protecting him at the same time. You know, I'm not sure. Maybe that club helped him make a couple of tackles. So we might need to make it a little bigger next week. You know, <laughs> it's hard to block a guy that's got a big club on their hand. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate you guys. Thanks.